Good morning students. We are discussing on water resource engineering and hydrology. Where today's topic is hydrological parameters. Wherein in this session we will have an introduction of what is hydrology. What are the parameters that reflect that affect the hydrology and hydrological cycle. So let's start the discussion with the first term the basic term that we should learn we should know about that is the hydrology so what is hydrology hydrology is the science which deals with the occurrence circulation and distribution of water that is upon or over or we can say beneath the earth surface so all in all we can say uh, it is a kind of science which deals with the water that is available on the earth it can be over the earth surface it can be upon the earth surface or it can be beneath the earth surface it is the science which concerned with the transportation of water vapor through the air the precipitation that is occurring on the ground as a rainfall or we can say the snowfall and the flow of water over the ground surface and through the underground strata of the earth also the hydrology deals with the evaporation from the water surface and the soil surface the transpiration from the plants and the infiltration of water through the ground surface hydrology is basically an applied science to further emphasize the degree of applicability of such hydrology subject that is generally classified into two different categories and those categories are scientific hydrology and engineering hydrology well scientific hydrology is a study which concerned with the academic aspects and if we talk about the engineering hydrology which sometimes known as the applied hydrology that is a study that concerned with the engineering applications on a hydrology subject it deals with the estimation of water resources study of processes in hydrology that is precipitation runoff evapotranspiration which is the uh, evaporation and transpiration together that is known as evap evapotranspiration it is a kind of combined process okay the study of such problems that is the flood droughts and to strategize it to combat those problems so this engineering hydrology is completely deals with the engineering applications the engineering solution because of such hydrological effects that is a flood and drought so how we can overcome from that such solutions can be obtained or can be uh, taken from such engineering hydrology branch okay so these are two different classification that is based on the uh, academic aspect and based on the uh, actual application aspect okay now let's uh, discuss where we can apply the hydrological or where what is the application of hydrology okay so the next topic that is application of hydrology like this application of hydrology helps us to know the various methods of flood forecasting as well as the flood control to uh, having the knowledge about this hydrology leads us to get that how we can control the flood or else also we can forecast that where the flood can be occurred at what level of rainfall the flood can be occurred in some 
places. The next is to know the capacity of storage structures such as a reservoirs. Reservoir is nothing but a kind of resource that store water in itself. Okay, so to know the capacity of such storage, to know the capacity of reservoir, also we should uh, get or we should gather the knowledge about hydrology where we can apply such knowledge. The next application that is the groundwater development. Okay, so to know the groundwater development, we should uh, gather the knowledge of hydrogeology of such areas that is the formation of soil recharge facilities rainfall patterns climate changes cropping pattern of in such areas those things are required where uh, you want to apply the knowledge according to the groundwater development Okay, so if you want to enhance the groundwater, we should know the detailed knowledge of hydrogeology, where you will get such knowledge about uh, for soil, uh, then uh, rainfall patterns, climate changes, and etc. So here also we can apply the hydrology. The next application that is the selection of suitable site. For a particular dam or the reservoir or if you want uh, to build a hydroelectric power generations okay so in such areas if you want to find the suitable site such knowledge of hydrology can also be applied the next application that is the maximum intensity of storm and its frequency this is required for the design of a drainage project in particular areas. The next application that is the interaction of the flood wave and hydraulic structures such as uh, leaves, uh, reservoirs, barrages and the bridges. Okay. Uh, also, the maximum probable flood that may occur at a given site and its frequency to know such things also we can apply the hydrological knowledge okay this is required for the safe design of drains culverts dams reservoir canals etc okay the last application from which we can know the water yield from the basin that its occurrence quality and the frequency this is necessary for the design of dams, municipality water supplies, uh, water power, river navigations, etc. So these are the application of hydrology from which we can get the solutions of hydrological problems. Okay. So after that, we will discuss on the hydrological cycle. So, how this hydrological cycle is happening? What are the aspects? What are the procedures that is uh, concerning for the hydrological cycle? Well, water can occur in three physical phases. The first solid, liquid or the gas. And is found in a nature in all these phases in a large quantity. So, depending upon the environment of the place of occurrence, water can quickly change its phase. So, it can change its phase from solid to liquid by giving a uh, few heats. Also, uh, by increasing the heats, that liquid phase can be converted into the gaseous form. Okay. So, a number of cycles are operating in nature and such as the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle and the several uh, biogeochemical cycles are affecting the hydrological cycles as well as it operating the hydrological cycle. Yes, the hydrological cycle is also known as the water cycle. That is such cycle which forms the fundamental concept in the hydrology. The hydrological cycle was defined by the National Research Council 
द साइकिल हैज नो बिगिनिंग और नो एड एंड वॉटर इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑल दिस थ्री सेट्स दैट इज द सॉलिड लिक्विड एंड गैशियस फॉर्म द साइंस ऑफ हाइड्रोलॉजी प्राइमरीली डील्स विद द लैंड पोर्शन ऑफ द हाइड्रोलॉजिकल साइकिल इंटरेक्शंस विद द ओशियंस एंड एटमोस्फियर आर ऑल्सो स्टडी इन सच साइकल्स सो दैर इज नो स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ सच साइकल एंड दैर इज नो एंड पॉइंट बिकॉज इट्स frequently rotating from one stage to the last stage and from the last stage to the first stage okay the hydrological cycle is a descriptive term that is applied to the circulation of water from the ocean to the atmosphere and to the ground and back to the ocean again so how it works let me show you one image okay here you can see our cycle is let assume that our cycle is starting from the ocean so here from the ocean okay this is uh, going to the sky or to the nature and then after again from the nature or from the atmosphere it comes down to the ocean okay so this is how it works so this is a schematic representation of hydrological cycle now the cycle may be considered to begin with the water of the oceans as we talked and water from the ocean surface is evaporated into the atmosphere now the vapor is condensed by the various processes and falls to the earth as a precipitation now some of this precipitation falls directly on the ocean and the sum falls on the land surfaces a portion of precipitation that falls on the land is retained temporarily in the soil or in the surface depressions and on the vegetation until it returned to the atmosphere by the evaporation and the transpiration so here we learned three different thing first that the water comes because of the precipitation and goes upwards and goes through the uh, atmosphere by evaporation and transpiration so if we talk about the processes of the hydrological cycle the hydrological cycle consists of total four different process that is the evaporation transpiration precipitation and runoff so also we can take first as a precipitation then evaporation and transpiration and runoff okay it can be in any order because the cycle has no end and has no beginning so uh, let us discuss first on the evaporation due to heat of sun the water from the surfaces of ocean from rivers lakes and from the moist ground surfaces get evaporated okay the vapor are carried over the land by air in the form of clouds so such process is known as the evaporation so here you can see the evaporation yes so what it does from the ocean or we can say such kind of uh, uh, moist ground surface wherein there is some amount of water okay because of sunlight because of sun heat such water is uh, getting heated so it converted into the kind of a vapor and such vapor is carried out by the cloud okay or we can say it carried over the land by the air that is then converted into the form of cloud and this process is is known as the evaporation the next is the transpiration well transpiration is the process of water being lost from the leaves of the plants from their pores 
So if we see in detail, if we thought that what is the difference between evaporation and transpiration, both are losing the water. Where in the evaporation, water lost is happening from the uh, water surfaces. Wherein in the transpiration, the water getting lost from the leaves or from the plants which is stored in the root or we can say which is stored on the leaves of that plants or the pores of the plants. So that is basically the transpiration and the basic difference between evaporation and transpiration. So if we talk the total evaporation that is the first surface evaporation plus water surface evaporation plus reverse ponds and or any uh, kind of uh, moist surface. The second addition that is the ocean surface evaporation, atmospheric evaporation and transpiration. So whole additional whole loss of water is considered as the total evaporation okay now the next term that is the precipitation precipitation may be defined as the fall of moisture or the fall of water or the snow from the atmosphere to the earth surface in any form in any form that means it can be in the form of water it can be in the form of uh, snow also so the basically precipitation uh, is classified into two categories liquid precipitation and the frozen precipitation in the liquid precipitation there will be a, a rainfall and in the frozen precipitation there can be a snow there can be the hail or freezing rain okay now what is runoff so runoff is the part of the precipitation that is not getting evaporated okay when the moisture falls to the earth surface as a precipitation a part of such water or the part of some moisture falls is evaporated from the water surface or the soil or the vegetation or through the transpiration by the plants and the remainder the remaining precipitation is available as the runoff okay so there are three types of runoff such as the surface runoff subsurface runoff and the groundwater fall so talking about the surface runoff a large portion of the precipitation left after infiltration flows over the ground into the streams and rivers which ultimately discharge the water to sea that is known as the surface runoff next is the subsurface runoff or we can say the interflow a portion of the precipitation infiltrates into the surface soil and runs as a subsurface runoff and it reaches to the stream or the river that is known as the subsurface run flow so that generally occurs into beneath the surface or surface okay the next is the groundwater flow or the base flow. It is the portion of the precipitation which done or which occur after infiltration, percolation and joins the groundwater reservoir which is ultimately connected to the ocean. So that is known as the base flow or we can say the groundwater flow. Understood? Okay, so basically the precipitation is what? Precipitation is the addition of evaporation and runoff. So this was all about the hydrological cycle and it continuously in the working state. So uh, precipitation, then after evaporation and transpiration and in between that there is a runoff. Okay, so this is how the hydrological cycle works. After that, the thing that we should understand that is about the water balance concept. The hydrologic equation is simply the statement of the law of conservation of matter, which is I is equals to 
O plus delta S, wherein I is the inflow, O is the outflow, and the delta S is change in storage as the hydrological cycle occurs. First, precipitation that is a kind of inflow, O that is a kind of outflow which is of evaporation or the transpiration. So, in between, how we can say there is a water balance okay so that water balance is o plus delta s okay so inflow should be such that the outflow and change in storage getting balanced uh, in the hydrological calculation the volumes are often expressed as the average depth over the catchment area so the expression for the water budget of the catchment area or the catchment for a time interval delta t can be written as delta s is equals to p minus r minus g minus e minus t oh so what this terms denotes so where we have p as a precipitation we have r as the surface runoff G is the net groundwater flow, E is the evaporation and T is the transpiration. So, if we subtract the runoff, net ground flow water, evaporation, transpiration from the precipitation, we will get how and what is the change in storage. Well, the inflow in the equation that is I consists of precipitation, surface inflow, subsurface inflow and imported water or the sewage through the pipe or the channel where the outflow in the equation that is I is equal to O plus delta S where O that consists of surface runoff, subsurface runoff, evaporation, transpiration, evapotranspiration and exported water. Okay, so this is what all about the water balance concept. Okay, I hope students, you understand both the thing uh, thoroughly that is hydrological cycle and water balance concept. Also, I hope you understand what is hydrology and what we will going to learn in the next sessions. So, I'll see you in the next session. Thank you so much for your kind attention.